281-837-2222, 281-837-2222. With any Bible questions or comments that you'd like to make concerning the Word of God, and we will give you book, chapter, and verse for all of your Bible questions, and we will listen to uh, any comments that you'd like to make uh, concerning God's Word. Uh, this broadcast is being sponsored by uh, members. Of, uh, let me say this: uh, the Goose Tree Church of Christ, uh, beginning April the fifth through the eighth. April fifth through the eighth, uh, will have their uh, first uh, gospel meeting for the year two thousand fifteen. April 5th through the 8th, entitled, What Does the Bible Say? And we want to encourage you to make efforts to be there uh, beginning the first Sunday in April, 10 o'clock a.m., again that night at 6 o'clock, and Monday through Wednesday we'll meet at 7 o'clock. And what's interesting about the meetings that we put on is after every speaker gets up and delivers a message from the Word of God, you, the radio listeners, or the audience, rather, uh, who are there, will have an opportunity to question, to ask questions, uh, to the speaker about the message uh, that he has presented from God's Word. That's something that you don't get in a lot of the, uh, the churches, in particular denominational world today. But this will be an opportunity Amen. afforded to anybody uh, who uh, think it not robbery to come and to support that gospel meeting April 5th through 8th. And we'll talk about that more uh, as the day draw clear uh, nearer. Uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 2. We're going to continue with our subject of exposing the hypocrisy of the Israel united in Christ. And we've been working on uh, tearing down their pillars, their, their foundation, their high groves. And trying to bring your thought and every thought under the captivity of Christ. Amen. And the only way we do that is by presenting uh, the word of God uh, and that being rightly divided. And so I'm going to read Romans chapter 2 and then I'm going to toss it to brother Javier Frias Amen. who is going to pick up, uh, in fact, where we left off on last week. Romans chapter 2, Paul writes beginning at end verse number 1 and I'll just read one only and then I'll toss it. He said, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. Whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another, he said, thou condemnest thyself. For thou judges, doest the same things. That is Romans chapter 2, and that's verse 1 at this time, Brother Javier Frias. Thank you, Brother Henry. At this time, we want to continue to discuss this subject to prove, the scriptures say, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. When we look at Genesis, Genesis chapter 18 at this time, where God, in his mind, in the, t in the past, he decided to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness. Now, at this time, the 12 tribes of Israel have not been created yet, as Abraham is still alive. And Abraham is pleading with God. Look at Genesis chapter 18, verse 22 at this time. It says, And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to, to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Hmm. And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Now he continues to number the number. In verse 32 it says, And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. Well, I, I will speak yet, but with this once, peradventure ten shall be found there. And he said, And the Lord went his way. And he said, I will not destroy for ten sakes. So verse 33, And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communion with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. If you notice... In Genesis chapter 18, 22 and following, Abraham was pleading with God to not destroy the city for 50, for 20, for 10. He said, if there be 50, 20, 10 that are righteous. Now notice, he did not mention concerning their nationality, concerning their race. Amen. He didn't give details on it. He just said righteous, wicked. He made a separation between righteous and wicked. And we know that Lot was in Sodom and he actually escaped from there. Now Lot was alive at the same time frame as Abraham. So Lot was not of the twelve tribes of, of the twelve tribes of Israel. Look at Genesis chapter 19 verse 32. Well this is when Lot was uh he came out of Sodom and Gomorrah. 
This is when he was separated. Verse 32, he had two daughters. Remember, his wife, Lot's wife, was, uh, he, she got turned into salt, a pillar of salt, because she turned back. Verse 32, his daughters came up with an idea. They said, come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger rose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Amen. Verse 37, And the firstborn bare a son, and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And the younger she also bare a son, and called his name ben Benami. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. Mm -hmm. Now, we're giving Amen. these details in the Old Covenant. To give it, get an understanding concerning the Moabites. The Moabites came from Lot. Lot was not of the 12 tribes of Israel. We want to look at Ruth at this time. Ruth chapter 1, verse 1. Now, Ruth was a woman that was a Moabite. She was not of the 12 tribes of Israel. Ruth was a woman. She was a Gentile. In Ruth chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went so went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons, and the name of the man was El Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came unto the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took with them wives of the woman of Moab, the name of the one was Orpha, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years, and Malon and Shilin died, also both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. We'll be right with you, caller. Now, I want to give details of Ruth before we take this call. Concerning Ruth, she was a Gentile. She was not of the twelve tribes of Israel. She was a Moabite woman. And in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16, after her husband dies and Naomi's husband dies, she says, And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, says, shall be my God. So God accepted. God told the Holy Spirit to write down the story of Ruth, a Gentile Moabite woman who was separated from the twelve tribes of Israel, but her righteous acts is what God recorded in heaven and would include her in the book in the Old Testament and God counted it as righteousness. Amen. Caller, go ahead. Amen. Yes, go ahead, Caller. You're on the air. Yeah, this is he. Go ahead. Well, last week, well, one of the things is Matthew 15, 24. Uh, if you would go to Matthew chapter 15, 24, we were dealing with uh, the, the Israel united in Christ. Uh, and one of the things that the Israel united in Christ believes is that uh, Jesus only came, and this is why we're talking about this, that he only came to save uh, those who were Jews. And, and if you read the NIV Bible, and this is just one of the, uh, the many uh, scriptures, you will, you will come to the conclusion that that is exactly uh, the only people that Jesus came to save. Uh, in Matthew 15, 24, uh, Jesus is talking to his uh, apostles, and he answers them, and he says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And so what Jesus is saying is, those are not the only people that I am sent to to save. But when you read the NIV Bible, the NIV, because these guys did not translate the scriptures, what they did is they interpreted the scripture. And there's a difference Amen. in translating 
uh, one language to another language, which is exactly what those uh, guys, those devils, I called last week, what they did when they when they compiled uh, the NIV Bible. They didn't put translations, but what they put is they put their own interpretations or their own belief in the scriptures, which developed a whole nother doctrine. So Matthew 15, 24, if those of you who have NIVs, you will notice that that would probably say, but he answered and said, I am sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which totally contradicts what Jesus and who Jesus uh, came to save. And what I'll do in just a few moments, I'm going to go ahead and toss it and I'll let Javier just com uh, continue to finish off. And if there's time left, I will get the other scriptures that I mentioned uh, on the air last week that have actually, they have taken out of the Bible, the NIV Bible, and I'll give them to you in just a few moments. And let me say this before I toss it to Javier. For those of you who did not tune in on last week, Brother Javier is dealing with the Israel not united in Christ, uh, their doctrine of that Jesus and God is only concerned about saving, about saving those who are Jews. In other words, they are, their doctrine is, one of their pillars is, he didn't come to save Gentiles. And so unless you were one of the 12 tribes of Israel, then you would die lost. In other words, all white people in their doctrine... All white people, Caucasians, according to the Israelite United in Christ, are on their way to hell, and there's nothing that they can do about it. They were created for the sole purpose of just being the enemies of God's people. And what we are saying as members of the Lord's church and those who have the spirit, that is a L-I-E, with all capital letters, lie. Because Amen. God came to save all people, Amen. not just one nationality, not race. It doesn't matter what creed, rich, poor, black, white. He wants all people who are created in his image, which all men were, to be saved. The number is 281-837-2222. Brother, Amen. I'll be here. Thank you, Brother Henry. And continuing this discussion, we want to look at Jonah. We all know Jonah. Yes. We heard these stories that uh, concerning Jonah when we were growing up. He was in the belly of the fish for three nights and three days. Now, he went. God sent him to a city a place called Nineveh. And I want to just give details concerning Nineveh. It was a Gentile nation. And I want to give details from Genesis chapter 10 where Nineveh came from. And verse, uh, looking at verse mm -hmm. 6, it says, And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram, and Put, okay. and Canaan, the sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, and Sabbath, and Rabbah, and Septeca, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, mm -hmm. and Sedan. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom, of his kingdom was Babel and Eric and Echad and Calneh in the land of Shinar. Out of the land went forth Asher and builded Nineveh and the city of Rehoboth and Caleb and risen between Nineveh. So Nimrod in the Old Covenant, he, Nimrod was not of the 12 tribes of Israel, but he built Nineveh. Now God Let's go to Jonah chapter 1, looking at verse, Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to the Nineveh, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare, therefore, thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So Nineveh was a city that that Jonah had to go and preach to because of their sins. Nineveh was a Gentile nation. It was not of the Hebrews. So Man. what occurred, as he was on the ship, there was a storm. And the men there, together, they agreed to toss him off the ship. He got swallowed by a fish. He prayed in Jonah chapter 2 that God would release him. He was released. In Jonah chapter 3, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. The scripture says, So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So he preached an eight-word message. Eight word message and okay, looking at verse eight, it says, But let no let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mildly unto God gay, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Now what occurred is this people repented. Yeah. 
Amen. This Gentile nation, they repented. And if we continue reading, looking at uh, Jonah chapter 4, it says, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry, and he prayed unto the Lord, and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying, when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. So, Jonah did not want this nation to repent. That's right. Jonah knew that God would forgive them of their sins if they were, were to repent. And this is the same mindset that Israel United in Christ has. They do not want repentance unto the Caucasian. Amen. You know, anyone outside of the 12 tribes of Israel that they define as the 12 tribes, they, with their doctrine that they twist, they say that they cannot get repentance. And God sent Jonah to a Gentile nation where we just proved from Genesis chapter 10 that Nineveh was started by Nimrod, which was not of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he did not want to go to them because they were Gentiles, but God said go into them. They repented, and this is the, one of the reasons why Jonah was angry. And this is one of, one of the reasons why Israel United in Christ is angry because the truth of the gospel, when it's rightly divided, Amen. teaches that all nations under the earth can be saved. And this is what gets them heated and angry is that when we teach the truth, they continue to stumble against it, and they're stumbling, stumbling against Christ. Amen. The number to call is 218-37-22. And we have two Amen. callers on the line, but caller who nice. called about the verses, let me just give you a few of the verses that are omitted from the uh, NIV Bible. Matthew 18, 11 is one of the verses that are, is omitted. That means it's not found in the NIV translation of the Bible. Neither is Acts 37. Uh, that is a verse as well that is not found uh, in uh, the NIV Bible. And that's Philip actually talking to the eunuch there. And that's a very powerful scripture because the eunuch is going to make a confession in Acts chapter 8 uh, and verse number 37. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. In other words, you believe in Jesus. And he answered, he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And so the confession with your mouth that Jesus is Lord has to be made in order for one to become a Christian. That's See, the, right. the NIV, they're devils, I'm telling you. Where there's spots where Jesus' name should be mentioned, they put the devil, and where the devil is, they put Jesus. And so this verse, uh, Acts 837, is not found in the NIV Bible. Neither is 1 John chapter 5 and 13, neither is Acts 28 and verse 29. These are just a few of the many that are taken out of there. And in Jude verse 25, they, they add more to what Jude has said in the NIV translation, Jude, verse 25. The number to call is 281-837-2222. I believe we have some callers on the line. Go ahead, caller, with your question or your comment. Amen. Go ahead, caller. Yes, you're on the air. Hey, Brother Polk, how are you, my brother? Good. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear your voice, my brother. Okay, let's stop real quick. This is not the Robert, I assume. I, I yeah, want Brother Pope to please Robert forgive Pope. me. But hold on. I want you to stay on the line, though, Carl. So let's look at the scripture that you're bringing up because we're not. A, let's turn to Matthew 121, okay? So we're going to go there. Now, you, you show us, uh, Mr. Robert, uh, where you believe we lied. I'm going to read it. And she shall bring forth the son. This is, uh, this is talking about Jesus and Mary. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, you want to help us with that? Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh-huh. Sir, that scripture doesn't say that. That scripture does not say that, what That's you just right. said. Sure See, what doesn't. you have done, you're doing, let me know. Okay. 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 
12 disciples when he decided to the disciples and he told them go not into the way of the Gentiles nor into the way of the Samaritans. Sir, okay. Yet he told them don't go into them but go into the lost sheep and house of Israel. First of all, who we trying to save anybody else? First of all, save our faith. Okay, but that is, sir, let me stop you. Sir, 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 sir. No, I want you to make sure we go slow. Jesus did tell his disciples to go to the Jews first. That's what he told them. We're not, nobody, no. No, 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 no. Jesus told the Samaritan woman, sir, sir. Sir, what tribe are you from? Sir, let me stop. Sir, 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 sir what tribe are you from? How do you know that? No, 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 no. I, there was, there, no, no, sir. Let's go slow, sir. Okay, sir, 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 sir. I want you to go slow. There are 12 tribes of Israel. I want to make sure you understand that. There were 12 tribes of Israel. Now, in order to know what genealogy you came from, you would have to trace it back and have, not my thing, and have the uh, the lineage proven. How do you how do you know? I, and they're good point because we don't trace it back under New Testament Christianity. Amen. Because genealogy, that's you just proved my point. That's right. New Testament Christian. Sir, let me ask you something real quick. Let me ask you another question. Sir. 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 Okay, cut him. He doesn't want to. Uh, go ahead and cut him. Let's go ahead and yeah, cut him. Yeah, I'll Please give him. him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's too much, yeah. taking up too much air time. I want to make sure we understand that Paul said before I talk to him. All. Paul has said, did you already turn him off, Sarah? Yeah. Paul has said something in the New Testament. And see, one thing I just found out about the Israel 99 Christ, they do not claim to be Christians. That's right. Amen. They do That's not right. claim Christianity. They, they just sure simply claim Israelites, that they are Israelites. One of the tribes of Israel, they can't prove which one they are. They'll just shoot out one of the 12, Judah, or I'm at, I'm, I'm from this tribe or, or that tribe with no way to trace their lineage back because all of the records were destroyed in Jerusalem Amen. in the temple in A.D. 70. And so that's why Paul is writing, even in his letter to Philippians, said he was from the tribe of Benjamin. But he counted all of that as dung as garbage that he might know Christ. Amen. His circumcised the eight day didn't mean nothing in Philippians chapter Amen. three. And so I would just be curious as to what would the Israelite united in Christ say about the writings of Paul? Was Paul a liar when he said circumcision means nothing? Amen. But the Israelite united in Christ believes that every male needs to be circumcised. Paul said it doesn't matter what kind of meat you eat. But that's what Paul said. I wonder what the Israelite united in Christ would say when they say, oh, you guys are a bunch of pork eaters. Because they don't understand we are not under the law of Moses, and it has nothing to do with the outer appearance. It has to do with the inward. In Romans chapter 2 and verse 28, listen to what Paul says in the New Testament. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew... Which is one, get this, inwardly, has nothing to do with talking about what tribe you're from. Has nothing to do with being circumcised, paying the tithe, keeping the Sabbath day. He said it has nothing to do with that. And the circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, not in the law. Amen. He said, whose praise is not of men but is of God. And so we are spiritual Jews, those of us who are members of the Lord's Church. 281-837-2222, Brother Ozan. God bless you, Henry. And this is one of the things we have to understand. Uh, one of their uh, a loyalist named Lori, uh, this is an online a comment she makes. She, she applauds them, but uh, this soul has been deceived by these false teachers. So she doesn't know where to affirm nor how to use the law anyway because she identifies that they are not Christians. Now here's the problem she uses a thought that you have to explain the scriptures. See that's why she, that's why Laura is confused because she's allowed them to tell her what a scripture means other than to read the scripture as Ephesians tells us 
that well by when you read not explain read Paul says he doesn't have to explain but if you read what he wrote he's clear which is our New Testament doctrine what is the mystery of Jesus Christ and the salvation of the Gentiles now look at Acts 26 and 28 I want to read this quick and we'll toss it back to the brethren now they claim that they are not Christians look at Acts 26 and 28 and then they tried to have the nerve to try and repeat the very writings of Paul, Paul would have nothing to do with them other than to pray for them and teach them the doctrine because they discredit them. Acts 26 and 28. Now those who are loyalists to Israel United Christ, read this and explain it. Why don't you explain it? Don't let them explain it. If you knew the doctrine, you'd explain it. Read this. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And let's see if Paul identifies with this. And Paul said, speaking to the first person spoke, Agrippa. Amen. Let's get technical with the language since they have a difficult understanding. I would to God that not only thou, but also all, 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 black, white, every, would be included in all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am except these bonds. And what is Paul a Christian? Because that's what Agrippa says he is, and he does not deny that's what he is. Now, I'd like someone to have the strength. Since you all are so articulate in debate, which we've shown on YouTube, you're not. Why don't you call up this number, 281-837-2222, this week and any week you so choose, and explain Acts 26 and 28. I'd love to see you tackle that one. Even your chief executives. Have them call. See, that's the problem with this organization. They are just as 1 Timothy is writing as Paul tells Timothy, they neither know what they're saying and they do not have the ability to affirm. You don't have any other writings other than the Bible to even prove anything with. The Lord himself said in the Old Testament, his very mouth from Isaiah, read you out of the book, not explain. Read out of the book. Go ahead, Henry. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I just want to go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Javier. You had something? Sorry. Let me just read Romans 1.16 for the caller that called in about Matthew 1.21 named Robert. Uh, this is what Paul says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone, everyone. that believe it. To the Jew first, and we first. didn't deny that, and to the Greek. Do you get that? So it wasn't just for the Jews. We want to leave the faithful Amen. saints of God with Romans 16. Uh, Romans 1, what you just read, 16. <laughs> Look at the explanation of the word for Greek. 1672. That's the New Testament number uh -huh. which will take you to this word. It is a Helen Grecian or inhabitant of Hellas. Now that's one of its meanings. Now watch this. By extension, a Greek speaking person. That's two of its meanings, either in the land or speaking Greek. Now look at this one here. Especially a non Jew. That's what the word was designed for, to, disseper to, to separate and differentiate between the Jew, yeah. and that's why the Holy Ghost uses it, because yeah. everybody in the Amen. world knows this word is specifically about a non-Jew. When you already have named right. the Jew, Jew in the yeah. 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 Jew Now, if I wanted to use this as a land relationship, I would say uh, those, especially those of Judea, and of Rome or something like See, now I would show, okay, at this time frame, I'm talking about the land. If I wanted to use the speech, I would say those of the Aramaic and of the Greek. Yeah. See, but I'm using it now in the thought of a person, people. Yeah, a everyone. people. Now look at what the Amen. other word means, Jew, to the Jew. 2453, New Testament number. This word says Judean. The same as belonging to Judah. Too now I'd like to see somebody. Now, now I, I know they're still listening. I'd like to see you go to the website and and address that. Yes. Since you, since, especially Lori, yeah, the Lori, poor young lady Lori was Jay. confused by these people. Why don't you explain? See, this is the thing. This is the thing about Christianity. Every Christian can explain how he was born if he's a Christian hey, and, and who he's a part of and how to worship. They like can. 
See, they can't explain themselves because they are nothing but babblers. All of them are babblers. They're repeating something that they've heard, but they cannot affirm it. All of them are babblers because they can't, even their leaders are babblers, and a babbler is simply an individual who repeats that which another man has written, but he has not proven it himself because he cannot prove it himself. And that's what makes him a babbler. And so the idea is every Christian though, that has been birthed by yeah, Christ, the scriptures are clear. He has the anointing of the Spirit himself, John wrote. He has the anointing of Spirit witnesses with his spirit that he is of God. You don't, he don't, you don't have to explain him. Well, you should, you should know you got to be baptized to be saved. You got to explain that to him. Guess what he's not? He's not, not a, Christian. a Christian. Amen. And he's definitely not a spiritual Jew. Amen. If you got to explain to him that he's not supposed to be using musical instruments, guess what he's not? Hmm. He's definitely not a Christian. And he's definitely not a spiritual Jew. Because that's like trying to tell a grown person that, that you know you came out your mother's womb. Now he grown. And he got to tell him he thinks he came from the cabbage patch. <laughs> he's definitely not mature, is he? Okay, Amen. so my goodness, man, you know, something is wrong with him mentally. That's the only two logical explanations. You can go ahead these lying and playing with you. And see, this is, this, is, this is the identification mark that causes the denominational world, the Hindus using the Sanskrit, the, the Confucius believers who are using his writing. This is what causes the Muslims, that group who followed Muhammad, to be so angry with the righteous that they want to kill them, but they're destroying people that are not even Christians. Well, they're fine. Those people aren't even Christians. Those are the people we fight against with the Word of God. Those are not believers in the law of God's teaching. They don't even use the Bible or right. And so the idea, not that they can't, if they were baptized, yeah. they fight against it because they do not believe. See, that's the thing that I have to accept once I realized when I was talking to believers, I didn't know anything about the doctrine of Christ. After I read it, I had nothing but questions. And when it was explained, I still could not grab the understanding because I was in darkness and would not grab the light because I couldn't grab the light. It was too strong. The law would not allow me to have the strength. And that's what everybody has to understand. And this is what they lack. This is, this is as, as all groups that we have battled, we simply read the answer. They have to explain that. You read the answer. And that's, that's what the scriptures say. Paul said, what about when you read? Ephesians yeah. 3, 4. Amen. Exactly. The issue is they teach that the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit is a word. And that's yeah. what they teach. That's only the word. Mm. But the scriptures have so much details on how the Holy Spirit is given in baptism. You've lied to the Holy Ghost. Exactly. How can you lie to words? <laughs> that's an entity. Mm -hmm. He's vibrant. He's alive. He is the Spirit of God. He moves about the face of the deep mm -hmm. and see, you know, and look upon. He can look everywhere. He is God's Spirit. He interacts between the human being who is belonging to Christ, praying and asking because he doesn't know what to say according to Romans. And then he, uh, he speaks to God because he knows what God is looking for, what God wants to hear. And we even have saints that are ignorant mm -hmm. not to understand that the Holy Spirit is the intercessor. They don't even understand it. Of course Christ is the intercessor because they are one. They don't understand. Right. They couldn't explain that if you no. held a gun in their head. They would not be able to explain it. And that is, you know what the thing is about Christianity? When you live it, you can talk about it. Amen. When, you, when you talk about it, you got to lie about it because you don't live it. But when you live that life, when you are a Christian, when you walk in the light, when you're not in clubs and having sex regularly, talking about you slip, getting high, drinking, looking at pornography, lying, cheating, teaching things that are not real to gain 50 lucre or to have an audience to admire you. You don't walk the Christian walk when you're prejudiced. Peter found that out, just being prejudiced against once idolaters, now you must go among them and accept them as acceptable to receive the Spirit of God, once they are taught, the Gentiles were so evil, it wasn't even a, it was a waste of time even trying to talk to them about God unless they were, they were trying to accept immediately when you said they weren't even allowed to go amongst them and eat among them if they were not showing signs immediately up front that they wanted to receive the Spirit of God, that they wanted God to be a robber and part of their life. That's why Peter so jittery, but he had to understand that God says, okay, it's their season, it's their time. It's their time now. This is the whole mystery. 
And they don't have to be, because see, up to that point, all Gentiles have to become a Jew spirit in, in, the, in the spiritual sense. Right, Henry? Amen. In order to be received. Amen. Okay. okay. And so, you know. Well, you know, preacher, we got to read that and, uh, and, uh, and to the people's hearing what you just brought up. That's another thing we can use, uh, hopefully, next week. Galatians 2, 11 through 15, mm -hmm. with showing Peter dissembling himself away from the Gentiles. Yeah, you know, exactly. Who were now Christians. I mean, yeah. Acts, when he told Cornelius, he mentioned that, you know, it's unlawful for a man as a Jew to keep company with a Gentile. Yeah. And he isn't a he isn't a a, a, a Christian yet. Okay, uh huh, right. So I don't know if this this group could the, have been or Christian may not right have been, now, but the kids they were definitely Gentiles. Yeah, you know? that's a key. I'm saying they were yeah. Gentiles. They right? were definitely Gentiles. Yeah, yeah that's and, and, and so, so they, were they can Jews, apply like to both saying, areas. No, what I'm saying, if they're saying that they the gent, what, what would he have a problem with if they were? Because you remember one part of their doctrine yeah, is he Jews and Gentiles. For? But see, then, you know what they lie and they say well, this is trying to twist it right. This is Hellenistic. You know, he doesn't even understand what that word means. See, that's the thing. When you try to use a word, you can't tell. You know, you're gonna, so what you're going to say is you're going to come along centuries later and tell people what words mean. Yeah, that's what they're trying to Starting do. Starting with God. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to start with yeah, God telling him what word mm -hmm. means. And he invented language. You know, that's sad. See, that's what makes, but see, when you're, when you're prejudiced, that's one of the things about prejudice. And you know what's sad about this group? They gladly ride in on the blessings of equal rights. Oh, yeah. They are as black as black can be by voice. They let you know they're black. Mm -hmm. And they let you know by lies that they're Judah. And we can see you are black. But we can't see you as Judah. Uh, see, you check that guy real yeah. well, that, that false robber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. check them real yeah, well. You say, you see, from? see, you know, now, now if, he, if he was a Jew, he would have known to say the records are kept in the hall. But there's no more hall. To he couldn't prove he was a Jew no. if you put a gun in his that's head. Right. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. And that's what the law destroyed that for. So no man can prove that. he picked Judah out of all the other tribes? The because other he's black. <laughs> See, that's their main oh, okay, thing. Judah's black. black. See, so they tried to pick the you? best tribe they could find. You is a car? No, he's, he's not black. See how he is not black. <laughs> See, so, so his skin. They, they threw him in in another room. But they have taught because the girl Lori says they taught her that they are not Christians. That's the difference in Christianity. But you know what they're attributing Christianity to? Yeah, Baptist. Those blue eyed man. white man. That's well, yeah, their or, or in the That's how they the Baptist too. I'm going to be on the Baptist and the Catholic. They, you know, because, those guys link us up with them too. They yeah. think we, we're part of but Joel you know Osteen and TDJ. <laughs> that's so sad. Credible well, dollars. And so and they we, see them crooks and they think, okay, we're all crooks. And we man. cut them up just yeah, like man. we cut them up. That's right. Remember the guy said, y'all tired? He's so dumb. You don't yeah, even know what we do. You know what makes you dumb? Is when you say something about a man that hasn't been validated. Mm -hmm. That really makes you dumb. That's right. At least a fool, when he keeps his mouth closed, he appears wise, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Yeah. Sits there and says, Well, that guy didn't say anything. He looks wise. He's a fool still. He just didn't say anything. But these guys lash out and they just want to put everyone in one big yeah. bowl, yeah. one pot. Mm -hmm. That we are all the same. But they don't understand. They, they know nothing of the church because right. the Lord's church has pointed out. Every era. Maybe they hear like on TV, you know, even the world. They say the church said the church pope is stepping down, you know, and uh, yeah, he's going to retire. They, now, if they, if, if the they understood, if they understood, they would know that we speak against yeah, something. Too, right. It ain't the church. Catholic See, brother, church is not the that's church. That's what makes us and the saints of God and the scriptures Christian because we speak against all areas, right, starting with what's within oh, the kingdom that's right. to the uttermost parts of the that's world, right. what's without Amen. the kingdom. Amen. And see, that's what causes us to be hated in the kingdom that's right. by the false tares and outside the kingdom. That's right. Remember what the Bible said about Jesus, a man of sorrow. Now, you know, it's amazing how these false teachers always want to smile, them and their wives. All 32 teeth will get their teeth potted so white, <laughs> the teeth white in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And everybody does that to smile, but Jesus is a man of sorrows. See, that's how they don't identify because they're fake, so they got to present everything as positive and upbeat. Man, how you gonna come tell me I'm lost smiling? Yeah. I'd like to see Joel Osteen come tell me I'm lost and yeah, keeping that 32 grand smile. Uh, he ain't gonna do okay and because he's not gonna even tell me because he could no. care less about the soul. Right. And see, that's the idea he spoke out and said uh, that homosexuals can't be married. I'd like to hear oh, he him did? say, 
Yeah, he's wrong, but I, I, I like to hear him say, hear him say they're that. eternally lost because of that. Mm. But we don't. No, they shouldn't be married. I, I, I'm not going to participate in that. You know, I don't approve of that. Surprising well, who made that. you Jesus to approve Thank anything? You. you should say Jesus doesn't approve. See, even in his right. explanation, he identifies with he, himself. Yeah, me. That's yeah. what I believe. What he believes, which is Jesus. which is debatable and right. also can be discredited because right. he's a flesh. Right. See, he doesn't even know where to affirm what Paul is saying. They don't know how to affirm what they say. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. But, you know, God bless y'all. Man, y'all did an job. excellent job. Brother, I'm telling you, excellent.